My name is David Miller and I'm a descendant of the Gungaloo people of central Queensland. Firstly, let me acknowledge the traditional owners whose land we are now standing, the Turrbal people north side of the Brisbane River, the Yugra people south side of the Brisbane River, Kwandamooka people of Stradbroke Island and the Waka Waka people of Sherburne. I'd just like to comment the former Archbishop was very, very supportive to Aboriginal people and that's why I am blessed and privileged to be here today. As we gather on this sacred land, let us acknowledge that we are standing on country for which the elders and our ancestors have been custodians for thousands of years and on which have performed age-old ceremonies and celebrations. God of the dreaming, great creative spirit, from the dream time you have given your children the good things of this earth. From the dense forests that cover the hills where the sun goes down in the evenings, to the whirling waters of Woolloongabba, the swampy land and water holes to the east, the local creeks, along the tracks, on the mangroves, on the Brisbane River. We acknowledge our living culture and unique role in the life of this country. May the spirit of this place bless us and keep us on a good path and walk with us in recognition, respect, restoration and reconciliation. And may I just add, may we walk softly, humbly and respectfully on this sacred land. I'd also like to acknowledge our elders past, present and emerging.
place all my trust in you, my God. All my hope is in your saving word. I pledge all my trust in you, my God. All my hope is in your saving word. all my trust in you, my God. All my hope is in your saving word. I place all my trust in you, my God. All my hope is in your saving word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. On the day of his baptism, John was clothed in Christ. With deep faith, he lived out his Christian life. In life, John cherished deeply and preached the gospel of Christ.
In life, John was endowed with pontifical dignity in the apostolic priesthood. Even in testing times, we feel the need to gather, even if in a restricted fashion. The community of the Cathedral of St. Stephen extends a deeply appreciative welcome to all who have been able to gather this morning. We welcome our civic leaders, His Excellency the Honourable Paul de Jersey, AC Governor of Queensland, and Mrs. Kay de Jersey. Representing the Premier and the Government, Honourable Kate Jones, MP, Minister for Innovation and Tourism, Industry, De Industry Development and Minister for Cross River Rail. Councillor Steve Toomey, representing the Lord Mayor and the City of Brisbane. We thank you for the respect and goodwill that your presence here today demonstrates. Before John Bathesby was a priest or a bishop, he was a son and a brother, and so we acknowledge his immediate and extended family today. His older sister Carmel and younger, younger siblings Michael, Suzanne and Anne and their families, we surround you with our love and care this day. We welcome the members of our ecclesial family, the bishops of Queensland, both current and retired, archbishops and bishops from around Australia, our brother priests, especially those from the diocese of Toowoomba, Cairns and Brisbane. We also welcome and acknowledge the presence of our leaders of religious communities, especially representatives of the religious of Queensland, Murray Ministry, Australian Catholic University, the Queensland Education Council, Brisbane Catholic Education and the Order of Malta. Archbishop John played a significant role in seminary formation in Queensland, both as a spiritual director and as a bishop as one of the trustees of the seminary. We acknowledge the presence of the staff and students of Holy Spirit Seminary. We welcome also the leaders of other churches who represent our extended ecclesial family. Archbishop Philip Aspinall, Anglican Archbishop of Brisbane. Bishop Paul Smith, Bishop of the Lutheran Church of Australia, Queensland District. Reverend David Baker, moderator of the Uniting Church in Queensland. Dr. Joe Goodall, moderator of the Congregational Federation of Australia. Mrs. Meredith Goodall, Reverend Canon Richard Tooten, Ms. Tasu Kim Watson, all who represent Queensland churches together. We acknowledge the presence of our other ecumenical representatives, those who are friends and companions of Archbishop John. We are grateful for your presence and warmly welcome you as sisters and brothers in Christ. In different times, dare I say in normal times, this cathedral would be full today. I acknowledge those who wished to be present but cannot because of the circumstances that we find ourselves in and who are joining us today via the internet and our live stream. While not physically present, you join your prayers with ours. We have received a number of messages of condolence from Rome and around the world. In particular, we have received this message from His Eminence Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Secret Secretary of State for the Holy See. He extends to us the greetings of Pope Francis and writes, saddened to learn of the death of Archbishop John Bathesby, 
His Holiness Pope Francis sends heartfelt condolences to you and to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Brisbane. Recalling with gratitude Archbishop Bathesby's long years of devoted service to the church in Queensland, in particular his concern to promote ecumenism and spiritual growth among the people of God. His Holiness joins those gathered for the Mass of Christian burial in praying that our Heavenly Father may grant him the reward of his labours and welcome his noble soul into the peace and joy of heaven. To all who mourn Archbishop Bathesby's passing, the Holy Father willingly imparts his apostolic blessing as a pledge of consolation and peace in the risen Lord. Cardinal Pietro Paralim, Secretary, Secretary of State. Gathered by Christ, strengthened by the holy apostolic blessing of Pope Francis, and supported by the presence of one another, may we enter deeply into this time of prayer for our brother John. We stand before the risen Christ bearing the wounds of sin, but in Christ we find the healing of every wound, the love that is greater than every sin. So as we enter these mysteries of life and death, let's acknowledge our sins, our woundedness, our fragility, as we come to acclaim the mercy of Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the God who is with us have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Let's pray now in the silence of our hearts. O oh God, who chose your servant, our brother John, from among your priests, and endowed him with pontifical dignity in the apostolic priesthood, Grant, we pray, that he may also be admitted to their company forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. 
I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist and darkness. I shall bring them out of the countries where they are. I shall gather them together from foreign countries and bring them back to their own land. I shall pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in every inhabited place in the land. I shall feed them in good pasturage. The high mountains of Israel will be their grazing ground. There they will rest in good grazing ground. They will browse in rich pastures on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. It is the Lord who speaks. I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. And you, my sheep, are the flock of my human pasture, and I am your God, declares the Lord God. The word of the Lord. Oh, what? 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Jesus Christ sent me to preach the good news and not to preach it in the terms of philosophy in which the crucifixion of Christ cannot be expressed. The language of the cross may be illogical to those who are not on the way of salvation, but for those of us who are on the way, we see it as God's power to save. As scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing all the learning of the learned. Where are the philosophers now? Where are the scholars? Where are our many thinkers of today? Do you see now has got how God has shown up the foolishness of human wisdom? When I came to you, sisters and brothers, it was not with any show of oratory or philosophy, but simply to tell you what God has guaranteed. During my stay with you, the only knowledge I claimed to have was about Jesus and only about him as the crucified Christ. Far from relying on any power of my own, I came among you in great fear and trembling and in the speeches and sermons that I gave, there were none of the arguments of philosophy but a demonstration of the power of the spirit. And I did this so that your faith would depend not on human philosophy, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Among those who went up to celebrate the Passover festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went to tell Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. 
In truth, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there too will my servant be. The Gospel of the Lord. It must have been all those mountains he climbed. Not Everest, perhaps, but certainly Tibragagan. Long after everything else seemed to shut down, his heart kept beating, even though the Bathersby's were supposed to have weak hearts. He lingered far longer than we expected. At one point, we thought he'd never die. But finally, in the morning light of Monday, the 9th of March, John Alexius Bathersby, 6th Bishop and 5th Archbishop of Brisbane, breathed his last in the 84th year of his life. News of his death came as the bishops of Queensland prepared for morning mass with the students at the seminary in, at Banyo. There was a touching symmetry in this. John had entered the seminary straight from school in 1954. He had returned as spiritual director years later. And then as Bishop of Cairns and Archbishop of Brisbane, he was responsible for some of the bigger decisions in the seminary's history. Here we were at the place that had so marked John's life. And as I said to the seminarians, at a place where they were more deeply marked by John Bathersby than they realized. I first met John way back in the late 1970s when he was spiritual director of the seminary and invited me a recently ordained priest of Melbourne, to come to Brisbane to preach the Holy Week retreat to the seminarians. I was surprised when I met him, finally. I'd expected something more in the imagined mode of spiritual directors, ascetical, solemn, otherworldly. What I found could hardly have been more different. An Aussie original, and a Queensland classic. I'd never struck anything quite like it. And through the years since then, my sense of surprise at John Bathersby has never left me. He seemed the quintessential little Aussie battler. But he was, in fact, as I came to see more through the years, a man of high intelligence and deep spirituality, straightforward yet deceptive, a very accessible character yet with great distances. There was even a touch of the mystic about him. Another small man called John once wrote a book called The Ascent of Mount Carmel. He was also into mountain climbing, but of the metaphoric kind. 
His book is one of the great classics of Christian mysticism and in it he sees the spiritual life as a kind of mountain climbing, a long and winding ascent from darkness towards the light of the glorious summit where, according to the prophet Isaiah, the Lord of hosts has prepared for all peoples a banquet of rich food and fine wines. That was St. John of the Cross. And John Bathersby saw the spiritual life in the same terms. It was a search, even at times a struggle, for the great banquet on the summit of God's mountain when all the climbing would be done. John certainly loved a meal. After our first encounter at the seminary, we were together again in Rome in the early 1980s, he doing a doctorate in spirituality and I the masters in biblical studies. There was quite a group of young Australian priests studying in Rome at the time, and we'd meet regularly on a Saturday night for a meal, eating our way through the menu and drinking a bit too much wine. Those meals were one of the more important and memorable moments of my years in Rome. And John Bathersby was at the heart of it all, master of the banquet in the most unpretentious way. He was delightful, often hilarious company, regaling us with stories of extraordinary characters of the Toowoomba Diocese and eye-popping events from his years in Gundawindi. But there was more than the fun. There was a human solidity and a spiritual depth in him which were precious in our time away, which most of us found humanly and spiritually very taxing. He was a bit older than the rest of us and had a wisdom to match. As I look back now to those years and those meals, I can see more than ever that I at least owe John Bathersby a deep, deep debt of personal gratitude in ways that are not easily expressed, at least in a forum as public as this. But thanks, Bats, for everything. Beyond those years in Rome, our lives became more and more strangely interwoven until finally I was appointed to succeed him in Brisbane after his retirement in late 2011. When news of my appointment came through, I thought inevitably of other times at Banyo and in Rome, and how bizarre it was that I was to follow him as Archbishop. I'd never really thought of John as the kind of man they'd appoint to Brisbane, and I had absolutely no sense that they would appoint me to succeed him. I thought of the moment when, after one of those Roman meals, John offered to take me home on the back of his motor scooter. The night was wet and the cobbles were slippery. So I clung on for dear life and I'd never been more relieved to make it home. And I vowed never again to ride or go pillion on a motor scooter, at least not with him. I think now how extraordinary the two archbishops of Brisbane were on that Vesper that night and both of us could have been killed. One of the good things about coming to Brisbane, I thought, was the chance to spend some time with John, but it wasn't to be. By the time I arrived, the dementia was already taking hold and any attempt I made to pick his brain about the diocese came to nothing. The blankness was descending. This became more dramatic as time went by, to the point where towards the end there was no recognition, no power of speech. Knowing what John Bathersby had been in his prime, 
the marvelous vitality of the man. There was more than a touch of tragedy about this. John had always dreamt of retiring to Stanthorpe, perhaps to write some local history, but that too was beyond him. And a move back to Brisbane was inevitable as the dementia worsened. In the end, his world became small and simple. But in a way, it always was. The younger John had no Episcopal aspirations or ambitions. And as bishop, his was never the grand style. It took him quite a while to learn how to manage a crozier. He needed the then Father Ken Howell to tell him what to wear and when. And though he lived in the big house at Weinberg, his own quarters could hardly have been humbler. I took one look at them when I came and immediately decided to move upstairs to something more spacious. Just as Pope Francis is recasting the papal style, making it less monarchical, less grand in scale, John Bathersby recast the Episcopal style, making it more down to earth, less princely. He was more pastor than pontiff. He had his crises, perhaps even his failures, especially in the later years as dementia began to take hold. But through it all, in the words of the letter to the Hebrews, which John loved and often quoted, he did not lose sight of Jesus. As Archbishop, he was no high-powered administrator, no grand orator, not so much a builder like Dewey or a preacher like Rush. But perhaps his legacy is deeper and may prove more enduring. Before all else, John Bathersby was a lover of Jesus, and he spoke of this more and more as he grew older. In the gospel we have heard today, the Greek-speaking Jews say to Philip and Andrew, we want to see Jesus. And that was what drove John Bathersby he wanted to see Jesus, and that became an ever-deepening passion in his life. The one he wanted to see was no pale Galilean or good old plastic Jesus. It was the crucified Lord, here and now, as presence and power. And it was no accident that he took as his Episcopal motto, Lex Crucis, the law of the cross. Nor was it by chance that he died clutching a cross. There was, he knew, no other way than by the cross of Christ that he could reach the summit. There was no other path. He knew the great truth spoken by Jesus in the gospel, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, and bear, it bears much fruit. So now the grain falls finally deep into the earth, and we await the fruit. John didn't speak the language of philosophy so much. He didn't specialize in arguments of intellectual sophistication. His was the simpler and more mysterious language of discipleship. And he offered the arguments of love. For 20 years, he never ceased to point his flock in that direction urging them not to lose sight of Jesus in the midst of all the troubles and turmoil, all the complexities and confusion. 
In that sense, John Bathersby was a simple man, but it was the hard-won simplicity of a man who had come to know what really mattered on the long climb of life. That simplicity, that clarity of vision is his greatest legacy to the Archdiocese of Brisbane. In the Gospel story of the Transfiguration, which the church read on the Sunday John lay dying, Jesus leads Peter, James and John up a high mountain and there on the summit he is transfigured dazzlingly in their presence. They see him as never before. They see him as he really is. Through the years, Jesus has led our John up a high mountain and from the summit the view is spectacular. Not so much the sweeping panorama, but the dazzling vision of Jesus. Now that John has reached the end of the climb, during which he has never lost sight of Jesus, he stands before the dazzling vision of Christ crucified and risen, the Lord whose scars shine like the sun, the climbing is all done. The time for rest has come. As the Lord of hosts ushers John Bathersby to the table of the great banquet, where he will surely be the best of companions as he was all those years ago in Rome. Eternal rest give to John, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. Faced with the mystery of death, we turn to the God who is life, in whom there is no shadow of death, the God who listens to the human heart. So let's pray now in the power of Easter faith. For Archbishop John, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life and who served the church as a priest, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For those whose lives have been touched by the ministry of Archbishop John, may they show the goodness of God to all they meet. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all brother priests, family and friends who mourn the death of Archbishop John, may faith sustain them and their hope be renewed. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all who mourn, may the Lord show tenderness to the family and friends of Archbishop John at this time of sorrow. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. 
of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, we ask you here our prayer. God of all compassion, support us all the day long till the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy give us a safe lodging a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrificial gifts we offer for the soul of your servant, Archbishop John, that as you accorded him the pontifical dignity in this world, so you may admit him to the company of your saints in the heavenly kingdom, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ your Son. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. For your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Ken, my assistant bishop, my brother bishops here present, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, with Peter and Paul and Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, your death, your resurrection, until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us as a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, that all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, To us also, your servants, too, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Keeping in mind the restrictions which are in place. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, almighty and merciful God, that as you made your servant, Archbishop John, an ambassador for Christ on earth, so you may raise him purified by this sacrifice to be seated with Christ in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. With faith in Jesus Christ, we now bid farewell to our dear brother John. We pray in confidence to God, in whose sight all creation lives, that God will raise up in holiness and power the mortal body of our brother John and command his soul to be numbered among the blessed. May God grant him a merciful judgment, deliverance from death, and pardon of all sin. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, carry John home to be at peace with the Father. And may John rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon John in this life, signs to us of your marvellous goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. God of all mercies, turn towards us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to John and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet again in Christ and are with you and with John our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace. Let us take our brother John to his place of rest.
Sorry. God our Father, we pause at this font in the waters of which John was baptized. You opened for him the door to life in the Holy Spirit, and the way home to heaven was open to him. As your son, Archbishop John was a witness to the gospel and proclaimed Christ crucified and risen. May the promises offered from the font of rebirth now be fulfilled for John, your beloved, and heir to all your promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, first born from the dead, the Lord for ever and ever. Mother of Christ, Mother of us all, we pause with our brother John before you, whom he loved as a mother. And so we sing. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. Ad te clamamus, exoles filie ve, ad te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum valle. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, Illos tuos misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et Iesum benedictum fructum ven 
entrance to it. Nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, O pia, O dulcis Virgo Maria. Our brother John has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, we now accompany him with our prayers. Pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be re reunited one day with our brother John, Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. All praise to you, Lord of all creation. Praise to you, holy and living God. We praise and bless you for your mercy. We praise and bless you for your kindness. Blessed is the Lord our God. You sanctify the homes of the living and make holy the places of the dead. You alone open the gates of righteousness and lead us to the dwellings of the saints. Blessed is the Lord our God. We praise you, our refuge and strength. We bless you, our God and Redeemer. Your praise is always in our hearts and on our lips. We remember the mighty deeds of the covenant. Blessed is the Lord our God. Almighty and eternal God, remember the mercy with which you graced your servant, our brother John, in this life. 
receive him, we pray, into the mansions of the saints. As we make ready our brother's resting place, look also with love on those who mourn and comfort them in their loss. Through Christ our Lord. in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we now commend to Almighty God our dear brother John, and we commit his body to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May the Lord bless him and keep him, May the Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon John and give him peace. trust in you, my God, for my hope is in your saving word. I pledge As we bid farewell to John, we open our hearts again in prayer to God, the source of all mercies. Gracious Lord, forgive the sins of those who have died in Christ, especially Archbishop John. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember all, who, all the good they have done. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Welcome them into eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Archbishop John. Comfort them in their grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray also for ourselves on our pilgrimage through life. Keep us faithful in your service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. On our journey towards the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as the Lord has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, hear our prayers for those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all mercy, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You hear the prayers of the humble. Hear your people now who cry to you in their need and strengthen our hope in your infinite goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto John, O Lord, May he rest in peace. Amen. May the soul of John and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God who is endless peace bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.